Let's go to page 259. This is lesson 6-1. The objective of this lesson is to find roots of a real number. So this is talking about the square root. Um, the square root of a number is, is a solution. Of, when you have x squared equal to b, and so when you take this to solve for x, you, you take the square root on both sides. So you're going to get x equal to plus or minus square root of b. Okay? So when you take the square root of the variable, you have to have a plus or minus on both sides. Okay? But when you take a square root of a number, like example, like if you have like square root of 25, okay? when you take a square root of a number, you just take the principal root or the positive. So this would be just 5. Okay? So there's a difference. So again, when you, when you start with a variable, and when you solve, when you take the square root, you're going to get plus or minus. But if you start with a number, you take the square root, you only take the positive. Okay, this is called the principal root. Okay, so let's go over example one. Example one a, you got square root of nine. And so square root of nine equal to three, because three squared equal to, um, equal to nine. Now, another way to simplify the square root is you kind of break it down into, into prime numbers. So 9, right? So you break it down to 3 and 3, 3 times 3. Now the square root, okay, when there's no number, means there's an index of 2. This is called an index. So that means you need to get 2 of the, this is called a radicand. So when you take the square root, it means you need to get 2 of the same radicand to make a number. So 2 of these make into an integer. So 2 radicands make an integer. Okay. So 1b. You got negative square root of 9. So from here, we know that this is equal to 3. So line it up. So this be negative 3, and it will be answered. So you can make sure you line up. Okay, 1c. Okay, you got square root of 1 over 9. Now what you do is, when you have a fraction, just go and separate the top from the bottom and do each part individually. And so this will be equal to 1 over 3. Okay, okay 1d. You have square root of 0 0.09, okay? And so there are several ways we can do this. See, what happens when you have decimal? So square root, the two digits inside the square root will make one digit, uh, become one digit in a, in a uh, decimal integer. So what you do is line it up. So over here, okay, so you can just line up partition. So square root of 0 give you 0, and here's a decimal. Now square root of 9, we give you three, right? Again, two digits make into one digit, and so that's it, okay? Or another way to do this is you convert into fraction, okay? So square root of 0 0.09 is equal to square root of nine over 100, and square root of nine is equal to three, square root of 100 is 10, and so again, so you can either use this way, and that's it, or you can use decimal. Okay, so you can convert this or you can leave it like that, either way. Right. Okay, let's go to example two. <clears throat> example two A. Okay, you got x squared is equal to nine. So again, when you start with a variable, when you take the square root, you have to put plus and minus on the other side. So what you do is you go ahead and take the square root on both sides. So the square and square we cancel out, so x equal to, now when you put a square, you have to have plus or minus, right? We become plus or minus three. Okay. <clears throat> and for 2b, you got x squared plus four equal to zero. So to use a square root method, you minus four on both sides. So you got x squared equal to negative four, and take the square root on both sides. So I'm going to write it one more time. So when I take the square root, okay, I get plus or minus. So I don't want to do too many things on the same steps. Okay? You, it can be very confusing. So I copy it one more time, and I can do it over here. So you can see how it get from here to here. The square, and square root cancel out, so x equal to. Uh, now, when you get over here, notice you got square root of the negative 4. Okay? So in this case, it would be not real. <clears throat> so in the later lessons, we will learn about imaginary numbers. So, so you will learn how to deal with that. But for now, 
the x will equal to non real um, okay so you get no real roots okay so let's go to 2c okay you got 5x squared equal to 15 so to solve this you can first you have to get a perfect square on this side so you can take the square root so I have to get rid of the 5 so you get x squared equal to um, 3 again I'm going to copy it one more time and I'm going to take the square root okay so once I take the square root, you need to put a plus or minus in the front right away so the square and square root cancel out and this would be plus or minus square root of 3 Okay, let's go to example three. <clears throat> Ex example three A, you got cube root of eight. Okay, so this is called a radicand. This is the uh, this is the index. So if you kind of jump ahead to page two sixty one, okay, so this is called an index, and this is called a radicand. And this is called a radical sign. So again, this is from this is from page uh, two sixty one. Okay. Now, what the index tells you is that when you break down the radicand, you need to get three of the same radicand to make into one integer. So this tells you how many radicand you need to have to make into integer. So this is how you do this. Okay. So you have so we start with an eight and you break it down. So divide by two. You can becomes four divided by two become two divided by two get one okay so keep breaking it down so again three each, so each of these these are called radicands because this is inside the square uh, inside the the radical sign so it's called a radicand so the index three tells you, you need to get three of the same radicand to make into one integer okay and that's it okay so again the three tells you, you need to have three of the same radicand or same numbers to make into one integer. Okay, so three radicands make into one integer. Okay, three B, you have Q root of negative twenty-seven. Okay, so if you do this on the side. Don't worry about the negative. Negative, it just the answer is going to be negative because Q root of negative is going to give you a negative. And then you can focus on the twenty-seven. So break down to divide by three. So you get 9, divide by 3, you get 3, divide by 3, you get 1. So you can index of 3 means you, can, you need to get 3 of the same radicand. So a set of 3, so 1, 2, 3, 3 of them make into 1. So 3 of, three, three of these make 1 of these, right? Again, 3, three radicands make 1 integer. 3 radicands make an integer. That's what this means. Okay, okay so 3C, you have Q root of 10 to the 6. So in this case, see when you have exponent, another another mean of the index means this goes to the de denominator. So this is equal to ten to the six over three. So exponent goes on the top, run, uh, the index goes on the bottom, and so this is equal to ten to the two, and so equal to one hundred. Okay. So you can index it goes on the bottom. Okay. The exponent goes on the top. So they're kind of reverse of each other. Okay, example three D, you have Q root of eight to the nine. So this is equal to eight to the nine over three. Right, okay, this goes on the top, this goes on the bottom, so this is equal to eight to the three. Now once you know the rules, you don't have to do this step. You can just go straight from here to here. Just go nine over three, give you three. Okay? So again, once you know what you're doing, you can skip this step over here. <clears throat> Okay, let's go to the next example. <clears throat> the example 4a. Okay, you got fourth root of 81. Okay. So again, index is 4 means you need to get you need to get 4 of the same radicand. So 81, you can divide by 3, so you get 27, divide by 3, you get 9. Divide by 3, you get 3. Divide by 3, you get 1. So break down as, much, as far as you can. So index 4 means you need to get 4 of the radicand to make it 1 integer. 
So again, index 4 means you need to get 4 of these to make into one number. Okay. And for 4b, you have fifth root of 32. So now, index is 5, means you need to get 5 radicands to make one integer. So 32 divided by 2, you get 16. Divided by 2, you get 8. Divided by 2, you get 4. Divided by 2, you get 2. Divided by 2, you get 1. Okay, so again, index is 5, means you need to get 5 of these to make one of them. Okay, so 5 of, five of these make into one of this integer. 5 radicands make into one integer. And so 4c, you have fifth root of negative 32. Okay, so from here, the, when you have an R number, whatever, if you have an R index, if it's the, whatever inside the sign would be your answer. So if it's negative, your answer would be negative. If it's positive, answer would be positive. Okay, so this will give you negative, and we've, we know from here this is equal to 2, so it would be equal to negative 2. So you can, fifth root of 32 equal to 2, and negative will give you negative. Okay. So when the index is odd, then you know, there's nothing to worry about. But if the index is even, then you cannot have the negative inside. It would be not real. Okay, example 4D, you have the sixth root of negative 1. Okay, so again, when the index is even, you cannot have a negative on the inside. Okay, so, so this is not real. Okay. So answer would be imaginary number, which we would, we would uh, learn in, in the later sections. <coughs> Okay, let's go look at the properties of the radicals. So on page 261, so, so page 261, we already covered the parts of the, of the radicals. So again, this number means index, this means it's radical sign, this is the radicand. Okay, and this, again, this is page 261. And there are some properties. So when, so first one is when you have a nth root of b, to the n. Okay, so in this case, what happens is that this will cancel out. Okay, and so this will equal to um, this will cancel n so be just equal to b. So example of that is when you have square root of seven squared. So square and square root cancel out, so you get seven. Okay, or you have the cube root of negative five to the three. So 3 and cube root cancel out, so answer equal to negative 5. So these are some examples. Now the property number 2, okay, you have a nth root of b to the n. Okay, so this is when n equal to odd. So when, when n equal to odd, then everything's all good. That means you can just cancel, so it's just equal to b. Okay. Now, number 3 is when n equal to even. So same thing, but in this case, n equal to even. When n is even, then they cancel out, but there's a condition. Okay, so this will equal to absolute value of b. That means whatever the b is, the answer will be always positive. Because what happens is, when the, when the exponent is even, whatever the inside will make it positive. And so when you take the n through of that, the answer is always positive. Right. Again, when, when n equal to even, even the b is negative, it will make this positive. Okay. An example of that is when you have square root of negative 3 squared. So you don't just cancel and make it equal to negative 3. Because you have to square this first. So this is equal to square, uh, square root of 9, and this will equal to 3. So notice it's become opposite because, because the answer is always positive. Okay? So don't just cancel it out and make answer negative 3. It would be incorrect. Because you have to apply the square, which will make it into positive. And you take the square of positive number, will give you a positive number. Okay. <clears throat> and another example is when you have a square root of x minus 1 square, right? Now, because of variable, you're not able to work it out. Okay, so you have to apply the rule over here. So when you cancel out, you have to put absolute value. Okay? So when you cancel it out, it means this cannot be negative. Yeah. So you have to put absolute value. 